Gur, the realm of beasts. The land itself rises to destroy its denizens. This is not a place for the weak, for the weak become food. Oryx, Ogors, giant beasts, and more flourish in the savage lands of Gur. But there are others, less savage, who call this home. Once trapped in the belly of Slanesh, many elven souls escaped and were drawn to Gur. This was due to the call of the mighty Ur Phoenix. Owing their own resurrection to these majestic creatures, these elves stowed away in the mountainous homes of the Ur Phoenix, dedicating their lives to serving and protecting the creatures. This was a mighty task indeed, for a local tribe of Iron Jaws constantly attacked the Ur Phoenix, worshipping, as it were, them as a mighty gift from Gorka Morka. After all, this was a ferocious beast, worthy of any hunt, that came back to life to hunt again. The rebirth, rising from its own ashes, caught the eye of Sigmar himself. Currently in quite the predicament over the reforging process of the Stormcast Eternals, Sigmar knew there must be an answer within the Air Phoenix. Unable to send any of his already deployed Sacrosanct Chamber due to the taxing events of the Necroquake, Sigmar chose a single hero, Knight Azeros Archibald Tomerinder, to find information about the Phoenix from the elves dedicated to guarding them. Thus brings us to game one, Lightning Strikes. In a flash of lightning and a crash of thunder, you appear. Your eyes struggle to adjust to your new surroundings, and your ears ring from the sudden outburst. Clearing your head, you remind yourself of your mission, handed to you by the God King Sigmar himself. Find the Phoenix. Find the answer. Taking in your new surroundings, before you lies a forest's edge, emerging from the barely rising light of dawn. Guttural, savage voices echo in the distance. A slight flicker of firelight seeps through the leaves of the nearby trees. Squinting, you make out a humanoid shape in a makeshift campsite, appearing to be held prisoner by armored figures. Placing your faith in the will of Sigmar, you accept the situation as no coincidence. Ever forward, as they say. Welcome to Game 1 of Mysteries of the Ur Phoenix. Our first narrative campaign. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this first scenario is going to have the Clash of Dawn, or Clash at Dawn skirmish rules. So uh, round one, line of sight is 12 inches. Round two, it's 18. And round three, it's full line of sight. Uh, but there will be some extra caveats, and I'll go over some of the unique things we're doing for our narrative campaign that's different. Uh, mostly at this level, we're playing it like the skirmish rules. So this is actually the 30 by 40 board that we made to uh, accommodate that. But you can search bodies, you can search the area, you can interact with some scenery if you feel like you can interact with it. As always, we're trying for Knight Azeros Archibald Tome Render here. Anytime that uh, he dies, we've got a reforging table. That I'll have to roll on to see <clears throat> what happens to him. And I've got a, let's see, so a number a one. Well, on this scenario, we're not going to do a reforging table. It's going to be for you later. Mean something bad can happen to Stormcast? Oh, yeah. <gasps> you definitely can. Oh, yeah. All right, so turn one. Knight Azeros Archibald Tome Render. Scrap! <laughs> <laughs> All right, um. So you said he could see a vague light. The trees. His ability is. 12 inches, you say? Yes. And the same goes for the Oryx. Or excuse me, the savage humanoid voices coming from the... the yes. <laughs> the savage potentially human. Well, um... You know, I'm ready to get down with the sickness, I guess, like Sigmar wants, but I'm also <laughs> cautious and don't want to get reforged too quickly. We'll just move to all. You have moved, and you just did a regular move? Yeah, just a 12 inch. Hmm. Fair enough. I'm That's cautious. Every Is everything you're going to do there? Um. Yes, I don't think I have anything, nothing to interact with yet. 
Uh, no, not yet. Okay. And I will straight up say it now that uh, because you didn't run, they're not alerted to your presence. Woo. So their turn is uneventful. And uh, what you do... Unlock dialogue! Da, 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 da. Yeah. I'll go over this kind of stuff in the first game just so you know people are thinking about, I wonder what would happen if you didn't run in that, or what would happen if they'd have done this. Scene unlocked. Cutscene. <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so the Oryx, uh, Iron Jaws, as you can tell from here now, just enjoying their campfire. Oi! You think this little elf git is going to tell us where the phoenix is? No, I don't think he will. He don't talk much, that one. Maybe he's scared of us. Oi, that must be it. Oh, we going to find that phoenix, though. He's a great gift from Gorkum Walker. You mean you kill it? You hunt it, it dies, then it comes back for you to kill a nut again. What a gift. Oi, what a gift. Oi, <laughs> and such. Quite. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. I can fly. So that I will be turn fly. you can fly. I have wings and everything. Amazing. So this is now going to be turn two, because that was their turn, is oh. humming and hawing and whatnot. Okay, because they didn't see me. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, I guess at this point I can see 18 inches. Yes, now it, now it will be round two and you can see 18 inches. I can see first boy over here. Yeah. All right, then I am going to try to charge this guy. I'm going to need a six. Okay. Oh, yeah. Flap, flap, flap. Here. So I'm going to charge in, I'm going to start beating on some orcs. Alrighty. We've got... Action shot. Hold on. Hand in the camera. Cinematic, yes, come on. Super action shot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're looking at threes and threes. I can re-roll ones. And put it in the... Go in there. Yeah, you're right. Threes. I'm looking for threes. He has two attacks, huh? Oh, okay. oh, he has four. Threes. Reroll that one. Uh, for, oh, yes, he hits. So hit and no wound. So he only makes one. Minus one rend, one damage. All right, so this will be a five up. And he makes it. What? Ruh -ruh. Well, he is going to be like, Oi! There's a bird man with a lamp! <laughs> <laughs> He'll gracefully pile in over there. Bird person, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just a regular old art boy. Uh, that's a leader, obviously a drummer, and just another dude. Uh, I'd be hitting on. They've got the ch choppas and smashes. Hitting on fours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, your turn, right? Combat, no battle shock. Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. Um, let's see, my turn, top yeah. of the it was your turn. How's my yes? Oh, <laughs> gross, that's right. Yeah. yeah, we didn't do it, we didn't roll off for turn two. We just let you go right into it. We'll sort rolling off after this gotcha. when it's intense. All right, we'll be back with the uh, iron jaws turn two. Oi, there's some feathery git trying to get our elf. That's my turn. No, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, they're just gonna, I mean, Dramatic view. come on up. I'm gonna roll them because of that, because they're just, <laughs> yeah, just get in there. my drummer just gives them, because with the new skirmish rules, uh, stuff like that gives auras, even though everything's an individual unit, the items like the drums and banners and all that give an aura are like within six inches, something yeah. like that. All right, so that is my movement, and then shooting at it in half, so charging, there it is. And swinging. I'm gonna swing with the big guy first because I have to go one by one. So he'll be hitting on threes. Three Yay. Hits. Wounding on threes. Two. Oh boy. That is one save. You take a damage. Go all four. Okay. All four into this boy right now. All right. So we're looking for threes and threes. Reroll the one because of his ability. Yep, yeah, that's still Oh, one. yeah. <laughs> it did so many things. All right, so that's one hit. Whew, man, <laughs> terrible. Uh, five up because of your end. Hey, he took it. 
Woo, I'm Look at that. Knife. Uh, well, I guess I'll go with. Uh, I'm just going to do the rest all at once since you don't have anything yeah, left. Back. I'm going to do the remaining three Ard Boy attacks all at once since she has nothing left to do. Uh, so it'll be nine attacks. Hitting on fours. Wounding on threes. Well, there's that. Oh, there nice. you go. Three up save. No rinse. Wow, okay, nine okay. on dice. I take two more. You hear it, you hear it oh, too. All right, and uh, executive decision. I've decided there will be no rolling off. We'll just keep the turn order as is. I think rolling off would be crazy in this type of scenario. Or uh, double turning would be crazy in this yeah. type of scenario. So we'll call that the end of that turn. And then you can start your third turn. So I'm really banking on the light of Sigmar. Um, I'm going to do my once per battle in your hero phase. This model can use it. So like steel beacon. So basically I'm shining my light. Okay. And that's just straight up D3 mortal wounds to everything yeah, around you. Right? We'll start with him first. Two. Start or go with leader. Two. Bah! Drummer. One. Uh oh. He's still alive. Two. For the last. Bah! Mm, so. you say? And now we're going to smack him. <laughs> Freeze. Roll. Freeze. Woo! Ruh -ruh. Minus one rand. All right, so I just need to make three five ups. And we're going to get this done. You can do a broth. Yeah. Go nine hot dice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have destroyed the Oryx in the war camp guarding this fellow. All right. Since you finished that in under five rounds, I will give you time to interact with your environment after what you've done. Is there anything? You would like to do. And first order of business after you in D and D is to loot the bodies. Well, there you go. Roll a dice to loot the bodies. I'm not gonna do an individual roll for each one. Just... I'm gonna rifle through these. But <laughs> I get a six. A six. Woo -woo. Oh. Okay. Well, that let me tell you all something else special is when you search. It's generally I'm gonna say a four up. It finds something, and because of the four up roll, uh, you find a missive little message whatever on the the one of their boy leader soggy butt <laughs> that has some notes on it and uh looks like savage or we'll go over that momentarily and as you roll the six you also find a bone key hmm well and i guess i will pocket both well pocket the missive and whatever you know what i'll just uh Stuff it in the armor somewhere. <laughs> and I guess I will. Hope he doesn't charge you for it. You have to put it on your bill. <laughs> <laughs> <Gah! laughs> <laughs> Alright, I guess we'll move over to the elf. Move over to the cage, and you see from your angle, totally can't see it from this angle. That wasn't on purpose. <laughs> a uh, lock on the cage. What's so now that I'm close to the cage, what exactly does he see? Because I can see a person in there, but describe it to me so that I know what he's seeing. So you know what a uh, old Archibald Tome Render seeing. What does his bird eyes see? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is obviously an elf in that cage, uh, standing, looks basically unaffected by what what happened there, just staring at you. Okay, then I guess I will go to address the captor. Or the captain. Scrum! <laughs> <clears throat> Forgot myself. Are you injured? Shakes his head no. Did they cut out your tongue, lad? Raises an eyebrow curiously at you. And then much slower shakes his head no. Almost disapprovingly. Hmm. I guess that's good enough for me. Unlock. Unlocked. <laughs> oh, no. I injured our cat. The elf looks at you 
stands at attention, slams his fist onto his left chest, and uh, bows his head at you. So you're one of the Phoenix Guard, right? He nods approvingly. And you could take me to the Phoenix. With that, he gives you a curious, uh, an apprehensive look, almost questioning why you would ask such a thing. I guess I look back at the orcs for a second. Um, oh, no. Uh, Sigmar sent me to discover a lead for the forge, or reforging. This does not sate his uh, apprehension by hearing this. I will not bring any harm to it. At that, you hear him inhale a sigh of relief. And then he nods and points towards the deeper into the woods. Did we hide the bodies? It almost seems like a snicker comes out of him. He shakes his head no and starts walking off I guess I'll towards the forest. Right. And thus ends episode one. Tune in next week, or whenever I happen to record, <laughs> uh, for episode two. And we'll see where this takes us. All right, to summarize what happened in episode one and what you got out of it is uh, you've unlocked a party member, member, a party <laughs> member, I can say things. So now uh, next game, and from now on, depending on what happens throughout the campaign, you will have access to both characters. You'll control them both. Um, and this is an anointed of the Phoenix Guard on foot, so you have two heroes now. You have uh, Knight Azeros and an anointed of the Phoenix Guard. Uh, so, he'll, like I said, you'll have complete control of him like you would be your normal character. So now, there's further characters you can unlock throughout the campaign. Uh, you can lose them. Uh, the only person that can benefit from the reforging table are Stormcast heroes. Uh, so if you lose the anointed, he dies, he's dead for the whole campaign. Per person, no! <laughs> uh, the reforging table, you could possibly lose your main hero here, too. Because uh, whenever he dies, you're going to roll a d6. And on a 1, they're actually slain. Nagash gets part of that soul. <laughs> That's right. You have to pick a new hero and start the scenario over. Oh. So there's items and loot and weapons and buffs and stuff that you can get throughout the campaign. Uh, with this one, you're not getting any buffs. It's just you have another character now. But if you die and you're actually slain, you're going to lose all that. You can choose the Knight Azeros again, uh, or there's other options, like I've got a Lord Celestin, uh, Lord Castellan, and Lord Relictor that you can pick from uh, to start the campaign from where you are on, the, on whatever uh, episode or stage that you're on. You can start from there. Uh, but you don't have any weapons that you've looted. You have no buffs that you've earned. All that's gone. Just mm. a fresh new character. That's on a one on the reforging table. On a two, uh, you start the scenario over with a permanent minus one to wound characteristics, and you lose all of your loot and buffs that you had, if Ooh. you have any. I almost just a roll a one. <laughs> just start over with a new character without the I minus have one. Five wounds. Yep. As opposed to four. I wonder if I should swap those. Because that's, that's a two to four, or that start the scenario over. <clears throat> but you don't lose progress with that. Yeah, no, it makes more sense to do it that way. Okay, I'll keep it. On a three to five, it's a normal reforge. Uh, you start the scenario over, uh, you keep... Uh, let's see, how do I have this? Keep you lose you. loot, but you keep your buffs. Ah. That makes sense. Oh, with a normal reforge. Because if when you die and you're bamfed back up, it's like, well, I can't exactly take physical items. Yeah, you can only take that the stuff that was already forged. Yeah. And then on a six, if you get a six, it's an instant reforge. You lose nothing. It's like nothing happened, but you just redeploy uh, outside of nine inches from enemies. Legendary. Yep. Awesome. Next, that only applies to Stormcast heroes. Yeah. Ooh, All that'll right. be fun. Hopefully. So yeah, starting from uh, starting from. Stage two, scenario two, episode two, whatever. Bam. You're gonna have your anointed and your knight Azeros. Hopefully I don't die. <laughs> Woohoo!